Hello everybody, this is Glenda with Fraylins and Friends Crafts Plus. It is Thursday. I am not going to lie, I am worn out. <laughs> Yesterday was a very big day for me and my family. And thank goodness things are not as bad as we had first anticipated. <sighs> Dad has rallied, at least at this point. Seems to be doing much better. Um, he wants to go back. I don't know if the doctor's ready to let him go back, but he wants to go back to the nursing home. And if he does, that puts him in isolation for two weeks, which I know he doesn't like, but he knows that's how it is. So, but he's 90 years old and we're very, very happy to keep him as long as we possibly can. I don't know, it, there's some who know him. He is one of the wisest men and most caring people on this earth. And a very, very deeply Christian. His, his relationship with, with the Lord is, to me, unmeasured. <laughs> but okay I was trying to think I wasn't going to do anything for today because I was just I'm tired I just thought I'm just going to just zone out but somebody asked me a question yesterday Robert asked me a question yesterday and I thought you know it's a good opportunity to say something because it is something that I need to approach now and then he asked me if it's hard to be on oxygen. The answer is yes, <laughs> but I'm not gonna say that's obvious. I mean, I think anybody would know that, yeah, living on oxygen is not easy, but what is difficult about it and what is good about it? What's difficult about it is the restrictions it gets, it puts on you. And over time, it it's just kind of becomes a little devil-edged sword because you your endurance becomes less and your seems like everything puts weight on. And I'm also bipolar, so I'm on medications that I'm on all kinds of stuff that slows my metabolism. And I'm 60, soon to be 65. I'm 64, soon to be 65. So that's not an excuse. It's just that it's the way it is. That's my story. However, as much as it restricts me, it still helps me have a quality of life that without it, I wouldn't have. So I am able to find avenues that I never thought I could possibly explore, like sculpting out of that clay. I wouldn't have thought a million years ago that I'd have a chance at that. So I just thought, well, I'll just start experimenting with it, you know. <laughs> and lo and behold, I am able to make things that don't look like a clump of clay. <laughs> I mean, I could make a clump of clay, but that wouldn't be so fun. And I'm not pro professional at it at all, but sometimes I can make things that look pretty fun. And the zoo animals have been fun. That witch was a blast. So those are things that I've been able to do this, doing these vlogs, writing. I have written and published four books. I've been, I've been doing writing off and on since I was in, in junior high that I've actually been putting on paper. And I got some encouragement for it. And I've tried writing things. I have written poems over the years and 
little, you know, short story things that I just never did much of anything with. And then, I, and I tried books. I tried longer stuff. But my mind just didn't know what to grasp. Well, that's one thing where, you know, being on the medication for the bipolar helps the concentration. And I've also been able to plan out a story before I start writing it. Which, the way I do it is not the outline. <laughs> Everybody talks about it. I make it even harder. I write a whole book and then I go back and rewrite either part of it or <laughs> that's happened on a couple of things. Because it's like, I will, I'll write a rough, I'll write a very rough draft. And it's not going to look anything like what the finished product comes out to be. But it gives me a, it gives me a, it gives me a trail. It gives me a guideline. So for me, that's what works. Everybody has something different that works. Lately, I haven't been writing so much. I've been, well, I've done some writing. A lot of it I've done for this video, for these vlogs. A lot of it I've done because I love to do these little activities with you guys where I'll put out like some, so like maybe three or four items that I want you to give me name for me. Like I'll say, what's your favorite zoo animal? What's your favorite, you know, give your animal a name, this and that. And, you know, and usually it's about four things. And then I'll take off from that and use it as a premise and write some little short story. Sometimes they're so silly. And I've even had some of you write short stories. This has been a while since we've done it. But sometimes I like to read online. Um, one of my favorites is Edgar Allan Poe, but I've also read Henry David Thoreau. I'd like to do some more modern, but I've explored a lot, a lot of things that I would probably have never really explored. And so it's, it's caused me to put Glenda in a better place, actually, as a person. Before I was, I was the nurse, I was the caretaker, I was the strong one who carried everybody on my shoulders. And I can't do that anymore. I think, to tell you the truth, I don't, I, none of this, God didn't do any of this to me. I don't believe he works that way. In fact, the Bible says he doesn't work that way. However, since it has happened, he has used that in me to help me realize that when I'm weak, he gives me strength. It makes me think of that song, I am weak, but thou art strong. And I always thought I had to be so strong, spiritually, physically, helping everybody, ignore when I'm sick, ignore when I'm down. That's partly how I was raised. A lot of it was how I was trained. When you're trained as a nurse, you're, you put yourself on the back burner. And a lot of the jobs I did, that it was like, the, and it's not that that's wrong, but sometimes you get to neglecting yourself a little too much. So, but I, you know, I plug all nurses, caretakers, you know, caregivers out there. It is a, and especially right now. I wouldn't say it's a thankless job, but it's a nearly thankless job because it's what's expected of you. And I'm not going to say that's wrong. I have had people be very very sweet to me about it and a lot of the times you go out on the street and somebody will i mean you're around town and some somebody will recognize you and you just don't know it's like um and it's not because you're lame but it's because you're used to seeing them in hospital bar. <laughs> and you and you also have a lot of different patients so 
but yeah, when you get used to seeing somebody in in hospital garb and in you know like hospital settings, you just don't or home settings, whatever, you just don't recognize them out on the street so easily. <laughs> Anyway, I don't know. I'm just kind of going off on tangents today. But I have come to realize that I can just, I can survive. I can let Joe help. I don't have to be Wonder Woman. Not that I was ever a great housekeeper. I've not been a bad housekeeper. But I've had to take a back seat on a lot of things. And there's still days that I let that get to me because I think I should be doing that stuff. But it's helped me realize that I'm still an important person. I'm still someone that people want in their lives. And I'm still someone God still has a reason for keeping me down here. <laughs> so with that, I'm just going to let it go for tonight. I, I am kind of worn out. I am tired. Yesterday, it was so wonderful to go down. Dad was feeling better. He was up in his chair. He was waving at us. We were outside. And he was, you know, we had to go, you know, communicate through the window by telephone. But I even got to joke with him. We even got to joke about with him about, why aren't you out mowing the back 40? <laughs> Stuff like that. And Dad takes a joke so well. And he, can, he puts on this act like he's insulted, but he's, <laughs> he's usually got a really good comeback after that. So, uh, I love my dad. We, we all do. He's a, he's a wonderful guy. Mom's a wonderful person. It's hard these days to communicate with her because of her Alzheimer's, but Sometimes I don't get, well, we can't go in the, in the nursing home. And I don't get out much because of the COVID. But when I, last time I was there, it was nice just to sit beside her. And even she doesn't like to be touched, but just to sit there and have her look at me. And like, who are you? <laughs> it's like, that's okay. That's okay. So I hope I've lifted your day a little and given you an inkling of what my life on oxygen has been like. And I want to tell you, please do subscribe, click the notification bell, and give me a thumbs up. Just a regular thumb today, not green. <laughs> I don't have any green paint in here. And continue to pray for my dad that he continues to do well and I did come to a, a realization on the way down yesterday I just leave you with this we lived in the Flint Hills when I was growing up we were going down we were on the between the Kansas line and the, and Marysville. And there's this sign, Welcome to the Flint Hills. I just kind of looked up, you know, I always look up when I see the, you know, when, I, when we get to those hills, I always look up. And this thought came to me, I can't be selfish about that. I don't want, want him to go, but I really can't be selfish because He'd be able to run those hills again. Like he did when we were young. Pick wild strawberries. Um, <laughs> build something if he wants to. It. I just don't want to be selfish that way. But I still am. <laughs> I still am. But I think I'll be able to look at it that way in my grieving time, but with both my folks. It's not happened yet, thank goodness. I'll see you tomorrow. I love you and good night.